to the decision on how to, what to recommend to council on the 28th. We've done our, our work for the evening. Hi, Lola. Keith, how are you? I'm fine. How about you? We're in, well, are in this room tonight. We're in room 112. Very good. Carla. Hi, you must be Jay. I am. Nice Hi. to meet you, friend. Very good to meet you. Uh, how is everything? Good. Okay, good. Okay. So you were in. Oh, the, it's the 6th that you're in Seattle. Yeah. No, not, not today. today. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out if I can fly up there that day and fly back, or whether I should rent a car so that I can stop here on my way back down, or... <laughs> that's it, now today I just can't... It's the party bus! Yeah. yeah. Hi, Julie. Hey, how are you Hello. doing? Hello, good to see you. Good to Walt is here, by the way. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that's Walt. Say hi to Walt, Laura. Mm -hmm. What we call our meetings. That's good. I will, also be, I will also be recording this evening to post on our web page. Oh, okay. Where Council's you? consumption. Somebody's consumption. Where should I be doing? <laughs> yeah. It's a recording already. It is. <laughs> Oops. No. <laughs> metal basket over it though. <laughs> okay. You know, I was thinking as I was driving up here, Keith, ski season's, ski season's right around the corner. Are you getting excited about that? I am. I came into the house the other night and my husband was doing lunges in the living room. And I was like, what is going on here? Ski season. You know, you know, it's ridiculous. You look very silly. <laughs> Tell everybody all about it also. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah, I totally get it. <laughs> yep. My wife and I hiked up to about 6,000 feet on Sunday. Oh, good for you. And winter is not that far. Yeah. Cold up there? Yeah. It was cold. Late in the afternoon, it started getting cold, and the wind started going. So, oh, it's time to go. Yeah, and look up at the mountain every morning when it's actually visible and think, it's time for some snow on that thing. <laughs> you know, just driving south, Mount Rainier looked really snow laden. I don't know when they must have started snow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that probably that last storm that came through. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 it's impressive. Mm -hmm. I like how real. Yeah. 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 I don't know about snow, but there's quite a bit of rain predicted tonight, starting at about driving home. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope it's not like it was Saturday when it was coming in sideways. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, we've had some of that down in Portland too. Well, you guys get to the rivers always get icy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that moment when I was like, oh yeah, we're not going anywhere fast. <laughs> yeah, and probably shouldn't be trying. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, oh, okay, I'll just wait. Yeah. I'm sorry, I missed that. It was, it was like 72 degrees in New York all week. Oh, It was wow. really great. Really nice. Did you have a nice vacation? Yeah. Was it vacation or were you working? <laughs> no, I wasn't working. It was just pretty intense. We did a lot. Were you in New York City? Part of the time in New York City. Um, my really uh, son is <laughs> a daughter two grandkids in uh, the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Oh, wow. So we did a show in the museum, and then we went up one day. We us up to a place called Storm King in the Hudson Valley. A treasure chest, if you like, uh, sculptural art. 400 acres and 130, 140 sculptures. World famous, I had never heard of it. Huh. Oh. Absolutely spectacular. Huh. And uh, then went up to Princeton. My brother, who was celebrating his 50th wedding anniversary, <laughs> came up toward me around. And family came in and had a party on. Sunday. Cool. Me time, I was explaining that I lost my wallet in Manhattan. Oh, my cat. oh no. I got it back. Oh, wow. The next day. Yeah. So, Hi. Hi. Someone said this meeting was about finding places around town for growing food. Mm -hmm. No, this is the Community Economic Revitalization Committee. So, hmm. 
we don't look for food yet. <laughs> <laughs> but we may be about 5.30, we'll be yeah. really hungry. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, someone said it was about looking for a vacant place around town to turn into gardens or something. No. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Huh. I don't even know what that is. Is there another meeting? Sorry. Not the two nights <laughs> we could see each other. Two nights in a row. Yeah, right. Now, right. Unless you guys are change something on this. <laughs> I didn't know that would be one strategy for overcoming blight. So fast, just so fast. Amazon comes to town. Yeah. When I was when I was working with that community center, it was called the Cascade Family Center. Uh, there were all of these rumors about Vulcan running around buying up property, and people were coming in and saying it's the weirdest thing that just happened. This guy just came, and it was happening right underneath everyone's noses, and just one day just grew up out of the ground. So yeah. Literally. So it was all of those conversations around you know gentrification and the affordable housing and neighborhood change and you know okay. physical building growth that kind of inspired me to go into planning Seattle. So fall. you were there after the park? I was there between 2000 and 2004. Yeah I don't remember but I mean it was the planner's dream was this huge park that we had planned for and developed in South Lake Union. Uh -huh. It would be our central park. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, uh, Paul Allen had already purchased a lot of the land and was going to donate the land to the park. Huh. And it went to a public vote twice and lost because it needed some bonding money. Um, because it was perceived as gentrification and a bunch of property owners who own very marginal businesses down there. You know, so this is, um, I don't know what they saw this, but they opposed it. Of course, it's now it's all happened without planning. Right. And without the park. Yep. And the amenities. Right. Yep. Uh, same thing. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was an enormous civic effort. And it wasn't even done oh, by the good. government, it was done by. By the property owners. Well, yeah, but even the planning was done by a private group and a non profit. Huh. They raised a ton of money to do all the planning and Interesting. run the campaign. That's right. Seattle, yeah, South Lake Union. Oh, okay. It must have been. Oh, Hi there. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. When I was there, it was just very exciting because the Taco Del Mar opened. Yeah. There was a place around the corner to grab the Yeah. Yeah. Got rid of Janet. Oh, thank goodness that happened. Yeah. yeah, she was such a problem. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. She got better off. She did. Good for her. She did. She did. Yeah. So I won't vote for the findings. No. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you're here, not just a gym like body boy. So there's no real woman in the group. <laughs> 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 these are these are the same. There are moments that are more. Yeah, they're similar. Similar? No, the same. Make some decisions without you? Veal. We're going for the veal. <laughs> So you're actually in an automobile. Okay. In this well. <laughs> So, so, so we should probably see you within ten minutes or less. All right. All right. Well, we were all feeling pretty disappointed, and now we're elated to know that you'll be here soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Uh, no. Sure. Not at all. Sure, if you Not stand at all. Up. But we'll yeah. look forward to your arrival. Yeah, yeah. it's standing room. No, it's standing room. <laughs> <laughs> I can even take up more space. <laughs> Our public is. So, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, hi, Walt. He is on his way. We'll be here shortly. He was at 14th Ave in Capital Way in a motor vehicle. So. Oh, okay. And in yeah. Olympia. In Olympia. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Capital Hill, Seattle. Okay, we would be here. Well. Okay. 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 It said there was some construction project up there that was slowing down. There is straight ahead. Got it. Thanks. What about it? I don't know, even though I was invited to. Wanted me to know that the meeting doesn't start until the arrives. <laughs> right. that what he was That's what he said. So I wasn't going to argue with him. You should go get donuts or something. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Change the location. No. <laughs> and none for him for yeah. being late. Yeah. With attitude. <laughs>
Michael going to be here as well? He is. He's on. He's kind of on his way from one meeting to another. Okay. So, yeah. I just you know, Right. He's probably stuck. Too. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you need a so that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Okay. That's yep. what it is. Yep. That's right. You're one of the facilitators. I was one of the facilitators. So I can answer questions if you want or not. And it's your name again? Annette. Annette. Yeah. So it's Annette with EDC. Yep. EDC. Yep. Okay. And then Jerry Parker's. Do they need the people who are in the audience? Oh, we'd like to include them. Friends of, friends of the family. Jerry Parker. Okay. And Kim. Planning Commission. Oh, Planning Commission. And Teresa. Sorry, thank you. That's okay. Teresa? No. No. Oh, okay. and Kim and Teresa. Like Anderson, but change the R and the E round. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That makes it easy. That's good. Can you say that again? Sure. Kim. Uh huh. A N D R E. Anderson. A-N-D-R-E-S-E-N. It looks like Anderson. Sir? Hi. Hello. And then you also have Lorla? Yes, I got you. And you have? Jay. Jay Rich. Jay Rich? R-E-I-C-H. Okay. I can give you a business card to make it easier to spell. What's hard of that? What's a hard about that? And Jerry and Kim, what are your titles? Planning Commission. Okay. Hi. Thank you. I apologize for being late. Uh, FYI, Walt is here. Oh, that's great. If um, you had so noticed, you in the corner. I, uh, yeah, I will be recording the meeting this evening so that I can post the proceedings online as per oh, council's, oh council's uh, previous discussion. This is Michael Page. Okay. So, I so good evening. Uh, I'll be uh, Michael. Oh, I will uh, call our meeting to order at approximately 4.30. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's right. So, uh, for three members, <laughs> Provided, uh, which reminds me, thank you. Um, here are copies of Michael's report out, so pass those around, and, uh, as well as the summary sheet. That's it. So, what you'll find in the report is uh, just a little bit of housekeeping. 
um, if I report, try to provide you copies for your files of everything that um, we had uh, discussed in advance and what we had talked about is providing to the development community and inviting them to the, the show. I um, wanted to make sure that you had everything that uh, we had provided to the group that participated in the conversation. The, the big sheet that you'll see, actually I'd point your attention to, is the executive summary with an easy letterhead on front, which is a three-page memorandum. And then that is summarized of the kind of the larger landscape um, <coughs> printed um, handout that we put together. We organized it in a couple ways. If you're looking at the landscape, this piece, um, I just looked, I indicated facilitator A, B, and C. And that was myself, Renee Sunday, and Annette Roth. Um, and we tried to capitalize, and we tried not to, in the creation of this document, we tried, certainly tried not to um, editorialize too much from what we heard from the group. We wanted to make sure that you were receiving a mere copy of what we heard from the group, um, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, and so we summarize it with the executive summary as well. So I think, you know, just to housekeeping, I think what I'd like to do is give you what we think were our five main takeaways from that, if that's, yeah. if that's okay. Because I'm sure um, your reading material is light this week and you'll want to read this entire chapter mm -hmm. um, between now and the next council meeting. So, um, the, the number one theme of the uh, go themes, gain a private sector perspective of the local economy and what it means long term to the Olympia is that most people actually felt that the economy was fairly stable. Um, but there were some choppy waters out there, it's my term out there, um, and that it was on life support in many ways. Um, for years the city um, for years the state has been a big a big driver in our economic, certainly our development landscape. And there's a desire, I think, on the part of the development se sector get away from that um, kind of big looming presence of the state. You know, the state consolidates, it creates a vacancies in the market, um, and so what does that do to their ability to maintain some sort of development presence? That was a big concern of theirs. So I think as we start talking about economic development and diversifications, we need to really think about strategies that move away from um, uh, focusing too much on the state. <coughs> Having said that though, there was unique opportunities they saw, they saw that, that we have as Olympians to take advantage of the state presence here at Stone. Let's still be stupid and cut off our spiders <coughs> face, but let's make sure that we understand that a state consolidates and creates vacancies, but also creates an opportunity to market. Treat, in many ways, treat the state as a, a bad analogy, but as our Boeing. Um, they generate a lot of professional services and needs for it, so let's find out what that market is. So the economy, uh, the felt was um, strong, choppy waters, uh, things to be careful of, and just moving pieces around the, the playing board, so to speak, not creating new capital into the community, not new investment. And so that's something to be aware of and concerned about. Question about industry sectors. This one actually was, <clears throat> the concept came out of there that I had never thought about before. And I was actually uh, quite tickled to hear it reported out was the idea that um, and it might come out of another one, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here. Was that uh, Olympia certainly is the state capital, but it is the regional capital on, on many economic fronts. I hadn't really thought about that before, and I think whoever brought that up certainly drew reserves the gold star of the day. Um, yeah, the smiley face in the report card home, because when you start thinking about as a regional capital, um, we can start strategizing how do we really capitalize on the notion that um, it's finance, financial hub uh, for a lot of different sectors. Uh, it's a nonprofit hub. We've always said that we're the most heavily populated nonprofit <coughs> community in all this, this, in every county, and we're the highest per capita nonprofits. So let's turn that into organized hub and economic activity. So take advantage of that regional uh, approach. Uh, as a state, state capital. Um, other things that came up as a, as a notion was um, <clears throat> we have a couple of gems in our community. A uh, lot was referenced several times as a generator of uh, huge amounts of technical knowledge in that, um, that, that facility. Um, and so maybe we gotta start leveraging um, the existence of that very technical advanced facility 
that the uh, public sector has invested in and turn that into a private sector generator. Um, I know what they need necessarily as a community, not necessarily as an education standpoint, but also is how do they project themselves as an industry and look at it as a private sector on a growth sector. Anything else you want to push? Um, no, actually, I think you captured it pretty well. Um, you know, the, like Michael mentioned, the notion of, of this, you know, Olympia being sort of the, the Southwest Washington Regional Hub was, was a very interesting, you know, topic. Um, I mean, the healthcare hub for the Five Hundred region, the retail hub. Um, you know, other people were talking about some of the things that could be potential market opportunities, you know, really, really hammering in on tourism and the waterfront as, as a huge, um, as a huge factor for growth in economic development here. Um, and then also looking at technology as potential for additional economic opportunities. You know, we have a lot of smart people in our community, a lot of well-educated people with professional backgrounds, and there's certainly opportunity to help um, provide additional support so that those kinds of um, industries can be, can be grown. Yeah, we coined that. <coughs> Somebody coined the, the phrase, economic induced, education induced economic development. Um, in the sense that we have a uh, home of, we're home of three institutions in this community, higher ed, um, and so let's encourage that economic development that occurs around education, and let's, maybe there's a way to bring a stronger presence of those educational institutions down to downtown Olympia. Um, it could be either programmatic or it could be physical, but certainly let's don't forget about the notion that education is an economic driver. We see that all throughout America and small towns of America, uh, that education and higher institutions generate uh, certain things. Um, certainly at Evergreen is well known for a variety of different things. And St. Martin's is becoming well known for a number of things. And the three lead highest lead rated facility in, in the world mm -hmm. is right right there in, in Lacey. And so how do we leverage that as a, as a community and economic development? Thing two, identify ways and efforts that will encourage greater investment in Olympia. I think um, this one, um, uh, this one got interesting uh, in a couple of ways. Um, obviously, the number one in the summary sheet, you'll see the number one thing is a change of culture as it pertains to economic development activities. Um, and, and when we started kind of diving into what does that mean, a change of culture, um, certainly is the notion that. Um, and I have noticed it, and this is an editorial, not from this, but it's editorial for me. I have noticed it during my ten years as an economic development director here in this Thurston County. That economic development is no longer a, 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 a very lightning rod for community discussion. It's a more accepted part of community discussion. Um, whereas before ten years ago, it really was a, a very severe lightning rod in engaging in civic discussion about how do we create our own community. So continue on that notion that um, economic development is not necessarily a bad thing. Economic development is a good thing. It drives a lot of good things that the city can do. Um, and, and there's some pretty harsh languages in the report. And I want to congratulate you for letting those words come out during the conversation. Um, everybody kind of let that kind of just happen and get it off their chest. I think people needed to talk about it and the notion that they do want to change uh, economic development culture. Is that, um, and they want to participate, folks want to participate with you as that culture starts to change um, and be part of that conversation rather than on this side of the equation going at full tilt and on this side of the equation going at full tilt. Let's go to the middle, let's talk about the balanced approach, economic, social, and environment. Um, because it, it can work, and I think that was one of the things that folks wanted to talk about as it relates to change of culture. <coughs> Excuse me, it does talk about a change of culture within the city itself, within the city staff, and the notion that um, uh, find those nodes of success and promote the heck out of them. That if it works here, people need to be demonstrated and uh, proven that it works. And so we can help you do that. We can find those one or two nodes of success that have happened and occurred here. So let's let's find them, let's pull them, let's find out why they work, and make sure that it's uh, recognized as a victory in the community. Um, 
Could you talk a little bit about, the group talked a little bit about our removal of regulatory barriers that extend timelines for development. Um, I know um, the city has done a very good job, personally, from a streamlining um, point of view, and I think that, that needs to continue. Um, and maybe there's a way that we can help promote the work that that's being done. But it also speaks to, sometimes when people talk about barriers, I think they have to um, get over the notion that 20 years ago this happened, not necessarily the case today. It, it, today we're, we're talking about reality, we're talking about today that perception is reality, and we have to get past the notion that, um, um, that perception is not reality. Because people look at it, how were they treated in the past. Um, and then the notion that aligned messages with policy to ensure clarity of policy and direction. It's that clarity of message, uh, it's that consistent message. What we hear all the time is that um, sometimes I don't really care how long it's going to take. I just want to know how long it's going to take so I can build it into my business model. Um, I think we need to not be afraid of that, the answer to that question. I think folks are sometimes are afraid to ask the question, how long is it going to take? But as long as it's consistent, and as long as we, we on the private sector side know that it's going to take 600 days to do this, I'm just making those numbers up, but I can build it into my business model, and then I can fund it, because what happens is that funding changes, market changes, and the developers left kind of kind of hanging the wind as to how do I move this project forward. And especially in a market that has seen some pretty um, deep, significant change in the economy, as we talked about the state retracting. So how do you, how do you, do that in a market that changes relatively. Um, and then the last one that I would say, the build and support quality infrastructure as a, a platform for, pri for private investment. Um, that one's kind of an open-ended statement um, because nobody could come up to me and say what the infrastructure they wanted. But I think what the message there was, there was a, 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 a desire to work with the city on understanding what infrastructure needs to be um, done. Um, it's kind of like, I won't know it till I see it, but they need to have that conversation with you and they need to be open for it. Um, so really the top thing, these efforts are change culture, uh, clarity of message, and certainly a partnership, especially as it relates to what the city's doing for infrastructure. Uh, spent the afternoon yesterday walking through the city uh, I was amazed at um, kind of what Lot has provided. Uh, it's always a little bit of an eye opener to me to walk through and get a guided tour, thank you, Mayor, um, about what's going on as far as infrastructure goes, because there are some significant infrastructure improvements and investments that are here to really take advantage of. Um, well, I think one of the things that I was struck by was the um, notion of the city to be a promoter first and kind of a regulator second. Um, a lot of people felt like one of the activities for the city to do was to be really strong in promoting civic pride, promoting the assets of the community, being a little bit more willing to toot the horn, I guess, of the city of Olympia and, and all the great um, assets that actually exist here. With the notion that once you start talking about those things, that um, those successes start building on each other. You know, you start talking about one thing that's great, then people hear about that, then they do another thing that's great, and so on and so on and so on. It becomes kind of a, a somewhat of an organic process, but you know, guided of course um, to getting more, you know, sort of bringing more development here. Um, I thought something else that was really interesting was the was the talk about um, investment in infrastructure. In my particular group, they. Um, mentioned something along the lines of um, if the city sort of invests in some of these infrastructure things, it, sh it proves um, on some level that they are just as committed to um, development in the city as uh, developers are, you know, and it shows that there's a little bit of shared risk involved. And um, so, you know, if everyone puts a little bit of skin in the game, then everybody is able to, to move forward and, and make something really good happen. Uh, those were the two big takeaways that, that um, I saw and, and heard from that particular thing. And, and inhibitors to these things, um, <clears throat> uh, the number one was predictable entirely for many processes. Again, it's um, perception is reality, but again, it has to do with, you know, if it's going to take a year, then it's going to take a year, you just need to know. Um, and then you can go with it. Zone code, um, I got a little bit out of a duck out of the water on that one because we, they started getting into the zoning code. Um, as it relates to um, what is allowable and what's not allowable, and we're really what's building for the market. 
obviously there's something there as to maybe it needs to be an exercise on the side of the table about matching up with the zoning code that allows relative to market. Uh, if that's ever been done, I think that might be a good exercise to, to, to address. Comprehensive plan. Um, there was a, uh, a very strong voice in the room about the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. um, and we didn't want to turn this into a discussion just about the comprehensive plan. So it's in the record. And I want to make sure that I report back out to you that there was a very strong voice in the room about the comprehensive plan. And so I think that's obviously weighing on people's minds. And so that tells me that um, there's obviously something there, but obviously um, it, it needs to be addressed at some level of the city is how that comprehensive plan is couched relative to promoting economic development, not as a regulator, but as a partner. It goes back to Annette's comment about shared risk. That was an excellent point that we got brought up. And then there was quite a bit of discussion about the physical and social environment of the downtown Olympia market. Um, it's the last bullet point you can see on the right hand column. Physical and social environment of the downtown market is not conducive to attracting interest other than, than one or two. Um, that um, came up more than once um, as, a, as a certain element. Um, if uh, if, if um, there were some conversations about uh, some interesting things that could be done of pooling dollars to move some of the infrastructure out into an area where the hospitals are or something like that. Um, that should be addressed. But um, certainly, uh, by not recognizing the conversation, um, I think we'd be doing the service to folks over there, is that there is an element of concern about that social, physical environment as it relates to attracting capital. I will tell you that um, as a person that drives potential investors through the town, you know, I do pick certain times a day that I drive through downtown with folks. And, I mean, it's there. It's a reality. And so I think that needs to be recognized in the conversation. Yes, um, that was a big topic of conversation with some of the some of the you know social elements that are taking place. You know, some of the issues with transient populations and some of the um, activity that's you know related to drugs or crime or whatever um, as something that could potentially scare off the kinds of the kinds of people who would be willing to spend money at stores and things like that in the city, or who would want to you know bring their businesses to, specifically to downtown Olympia. Um, and again, it goes back to that whole notion of the balance of social environment and economic as being the three pillars of a strong community. Um, and just making sure that each one of those works well with each other. So um, we did hear that as, as kind of a big issue. And a lot of it is, it was interesting because a lot of people understand and want to ensure that, that we as a community can provide adequate services to people who need them. But then also making sure that at the same time, it's not you know, a negative thing as far as it um, um, relates to economic growth. So where's that balance, I guess, was, was one of the big questions that people asked. Um, let's go to theme three. Um, in my mind, um, I viewed theme one and theme two discussions as getting to um, really problem-solving element of the conversation. And theme three really just identify ways in which to move the community to more proactive approach to economic development. This is kind of at the end of the night, and I thought I was a little bit nervous that folks would start kind of getting kind of tired and rubby, and I think for the most part they were. But they really stayed with it, and I have to give them uh, uh, great, great credit for staying with it to the last element. Some of the things that came out of here, are, are, there was a, a serious commitment on the side of the individuals there to stay at the table. Um, and, and I would leave that was as my lead off point to you is that there's a serious commitment on those folks to engage. Um, they they like the notion that they were asked the question of how do you be successful in this town? And so they, they engaged and so they want to stay engaged. They don't want to be dismissed. They want to be part of the community. And I think for years as we came out of my group because they felt like they have been uh, summarily dismissed on a variety of different levels. And so um, so that's my, my leading point there. Um, second point is they can assist by creating public private I think grant opportunities. And I kind of scratch my head to try to figure out what those grant opportunities might be. But if they brought it up, I think we just we need to kind of do some research there and we can certainly do that in the follow-up. Grant opportunities that address the concept of moving social issues out of the downtown core. And that also came up the conversation about pooling resources 
Um, there was a couple of bankers in my last group that said, well, consortium of bankers, financiers, and investors are willing to provide market solutions to social issues. Um, and so um, I just came from the Thurston Thrives uh, me meeting, and there was, um, as you're well aware, it's a consortium of a lot of folks talking about nine different topics about community health. Uh, there's two private sector people at the table. Um, and so the point that I made on my way out the door was, if we're going to move forward, you have to have the private sector engaged. You need to figure out ways to engage, and there's ways to do it, and then there are ways to do it. Ways to do it in the sense that thank them for being here, take what they have to say in serious consideration, and, uh, and see if it works. Um, there was also conversations about specific zoning and policy elements need to be held. The concept of getting to yes, that balanced approach is part of the What uh, came up a couple of times was the notion that projects start at no, instead of, okay, this is interesting, let's get to see if this works. Um, they brought up the examples of uh, communities that surround us uh, with the notion that they <coughs> have the philosophy of starting at, at the yes point and then work their way through the process rather than start at no and figure out ways that we can make sure that it works. Start at yes first and then see if it works the other way. And that was one of the concepts they brought up. Um, yeah, that was an interesting that was an interesting one too. Um, someone mentioned that they felt like um, the the codes were followed very very strictly here in Olympia, and that there might be opportunities for developers to be able to follow the code and have everything be you know legal and legitimate in that respect, but also um, figure out ways with partnership with the city you know to be able to move projects forward in a more timely. Um, fashion, you know, one of the things that I got was the people who are in this in this roundtable are committed to this community. They live here, they raise their families here, they love it here just as much as everyone at this table does, and, and they want to see it be successful. And so they realized, um, or at least in my group, they realized that there were a number of things that they, as a development community, could do to be more proactive um, about promoting the community. You know, about talking about the great assets that we have here about being a little bit more, um, I guess, you know, congenial in the approach of development um, in partnership with the, with the city. And I thought that was pretty interesting that they were able, they were willing to sort of look at what they could do and, and um, help to further the conversation. The last question of the evening was what role should the city play or have in supporting the culture of proactive economic development? Yeah. That was an interesting one is because as I was kind of, people were winding down, I, is able to kind of not only focus on my group but also listen to what's going on in the other groups. And um, noticed a kind of a tenor moving towards the notion of a, of a paradigm shift um, of regulator to ownership of projects. And it's a subtle syntextual discussion of how do you move the city from being a regulator to an ownership and a promoter of projects. And that was certainly um, one of the big things that came out was is that really is an idea that you're promoting uh, aggressively the notion that, 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 that your regulations are a good thing and that they can work um, and start from a notion of yes rather than a notion of no. But it's an ownership. And I think knowing the staff, um, I do know that they are that way. But how does that get out into the larger, larger sector? Uh, how does that get out to the larger community? Um, and also the notion that um, promote aggressively the notion that Growth Management Act is indeed a positive positive thing. And it's, it's, it's good for Thurston County and then we need to have the notion of promoting infill and density. Um, infill and density is a, is a lightning rod in any community and it certainly is in the neighborhood that I live in. But the notion that uh, if we have a, a larger contextual discussion about the health of the region and the community, then we certainly need to look at infill um, as part of the as a part of that solution, and then the notion that the anti-growth voice um, should be aligned and compared against economic and community goals of the city that will ensure a positive response to pervasive anti anti economic development sentiment. And again, I go back to the, my first comment is that when I started doing this work in this community, economic development really was a tough discussion to have on many fronts, and it isn't that way anymore. Um, but that needs to continue. We need to look at economic development as not necessarily draining and, in, and, and filling, but it is promoting the increasing quality of life. And it does work in balance with um, social and economic and environmental issues. And so the 
group really talked about how do you shift that conversation in a larger context and look to the city's leadership to help do that as well. And then consistency in educating um, community about the importance of economic development <coughs> and a positive role that it plays in building a functioning in the community. Um, and that said it very well is that these folks are very committed to the community that they're working in um, and that they certainly want to be successful. But what, what interestingly came out in my group was that they wanted the city to be successful just as much as they wanted themselves to be successful. And so um, when we talk about a paradigm shift, there's a serious partnership opportunity there when you start thinking about um, there's a couple of win-wins there. <coughs> Excuse me, and then again, I, I think it would be remiss to the group's desires to so the several strong voices about the about the uh, comprehensive plan, um, reassess the comprehensive plan and its processes relative to sustain economic development. Um, yeah, just to add on to that, um, you know, a lot of, I think a lot of the people throughout the groups, one of the things that we heard and Michael touched on this was um, the sort of consistency in messaging from the city um, about what economic development is. You know, it's not big, bad development necessarily, but it's, it's job creation. It's you know, contributing to the health, the economic and social and really environmental health of, of our community. Um, and he, being an advocate, the city being an advocate for them on some level and educating the citizenry um, about, well, this is what these projects could do. This is what um, economic development actually means in the city of Olympia. And um, this is how we as a city believe it should happen. And taking a strong, you know, a stronger approach toward that. Um, I think that was one of the things that they wanted to be able to do was see that there was m more of a commitment, perhaps, um, from the city to making sure that, that those kinds of things could happen and that it was consistent through the messaging. Um, somebody mentioned the notion that you know the planning department can act more as like a voice. You know, um, it, it can act as a promoter of the city and um, you know, instead of just a regulator. And I think that was an interesting idea. Um, People also, you know, mentioned a little bit about um, figuring out a way to change the tenor of the conversation so that it wasn't necessarily so politicized all the time. Um, that I thought was, you know, making it more congenial um, so that people were able to, so that there there would be an opportunity for people from on different sides of an issue to be able to get together and really sit down and have their, you know, have their viewpoints heard. Um, some of the people in in my group mentioned that they felt like um, their points of view about what development or what economic vitality is in the community wasn't really listened to very much or their opinions weren't taken as strongly as opinions that other people have about social issues, for example. And, and that for them seemed like that kind of is counterintuitive to the whole notion of, of um, equality and letting people you know, have a dem democratic approach to things. So. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's where you know that's where I landed. So I think the last point I would make on the summary sheet is um, CRA came up a couple of times uh, in a positive fashion. It was not um, it was not a to hot topic of conversation like we got to get this thing around, but it's always referred to in a very positive fashion. That it's a tool that the uh, community is anxious to know more about, the development community is anxious to know more about, and to become engaged and to be a partner in its successful application. Um, they like the idea that um, there is a, uh, it's a very good example of the community public-private partnership that they have been talking about and using several times in the lexicon of discussion about that public-private partnership. So I wanted to make sure that left, left that point on the table with you as well. Um, next steps, uh, I want to come up for air a little bit. Um, you know, it's been a lot of, you guys have been very um, cordial in, in allowing that conversation to happen. Um, you've been very, um, it's very much appreciated. I've had a lot of feedback from folks, um, just in my normal rounds of my day-to-day -day operations. Um, folks truly appreciate the opportunity. And it, you know, there may not be, I think one of the gentlemen said to me was, there might not be something real meaty there, but just the notion that they were had the opportunity to discuss things that had been sitting on their chest for a while was really substantive. It was a great opportunity um, to do that. Uh, I think uh, you know, next steps we'd certainly like to go back out to that community and 
say this is the report and this is kind of what we heard and um, kind of have them hear what was reflected to you. So I'd certainly like to do that. But I think um, I would like to have this conversation again in a more of a strategic fashion about, okay, we heard you. These are the things that we think that ought to be occurring. Is that effective tool or effective conversation? You know, we have a long time to set that up. But, um, I think there's an opportunity there for you to participate. Again, I want to thank you for allowing us to participate, but I want to come up for air a little bit and get <coughs> discussion and feedback as to kind of the evening and kind of what we got kind of next steps to. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, committee members, first, any questions, for final questions? Just, yeah, a few comments. First of all, thank you, folks. I thought that you did a great job of facilitation. I thought that there were plenty of opportunities for these groups to go off on some tangent and you were able to keep them contained in the agenda that was before them. Um, um, and I thought that uh, it was an opportunity for folks to vent. And in some respects, uh, some of that was them just telling us that they felt underappreciated. Some of them were uh, old stories from the past of how someone felt as though they'd been mistreated by Keith in particular. <laughs> but <laughs> we just use it Okay. <laughs> but but by city process or even city staff, frankly, uh, and those stories came up and just seemed to be stuck in their craw. And so the opportunity for them to let us know about that seemed to be valuable. Um, I don't think we got done nearly what we need to do with this group. And so the opportunity uh, for them to be